Not this again. <sighs> Dreamcast. Oh, come on. Fine, be like that. I'll just play some VR. Can't get me in here. Dreamcast. What? Okay, okay, give in. Hey, I'm Nos Game Maria. Welcome to the third part of my Dreamcast project. I'm very reluctant to do this video because I am absolutely sick to the back teeth of these three Dreamcasts in my house harassing me. A, when I'm awake, B, when I'm asleep, and C, just in general. I swear they appear to me like Vecna does. It's terrible. But what we're going to do this time, because I've not finished with this machine yet, as much pain as it causes me, we're going to do some more mods to this machine. But just a quick recap, as last time we changed the LED on the controller port board, and we went through a range of disappointing orange Kaiko LEDs, settled on the white one in the machine, and then after that, we used this beautiful piece of kit here, the SD card adapter, to make a backup of my entire GD-ROM collection, which, guys, has taken me close to three months to do because of the amount of time I get to do it. But now we've finally completed those discs, we've got one more item to stick inside this Dreamcast, and then we can sit back and enjoy some of these games. So this time, because I want to keep the noise on the machine to a minimum and cool it a lot better than it is cooled already by this teeny weeny little squealy Dreamcast fan, we're going to take that out and we're going to stick a 5 volt knock to a fan in place of it. We've got the fan itself to go inside the Dreamcast, which will make it so much quieter, guys. And it will also increase the airflow through the machine, so preventing any overheating because of all the modifications you've done. It also comes with a 3D printer bracket, so we can mount this inside the machine. Hopefully this time we'll be able to get through this with minimum fuss. But as we know with my mod videos, we always run into a little bit of a hurdle halfway through. So who knows what's going to pop up this time. So without further ado, let's jump over to our lovely purple Dreamcast friend. Get it open, get these bits in and enjoy some classic Sega Dreamcast games. So our lovely Dreamcast has been uh, pre-unscrewed just to save a bit of time there. We don't need to go over and over what... Uh, what you have to do with that. We do need the lid later in the video as well because you do have to change the eject bracket as it does interfere with the fan. And the biggest problem we've got with this particular model of Dreamcast is this fan is screwed on with two screws from the underside of the PCB. So I've now got to strip the entire machine out just to get two screws out to take this guy off. Now all that's done, we've got access to these two screws here, which we should just be able to undo and pop this fan away from the heatsink. So with that buttery and surgery, just to get to two screws to remove this little guy, and this is the guy we're going to be sticking in to replace him, which is a lot bigger, but hopefully uh, a lot quieter once the Dreamcast's up and running, and more importantly, cooler. So when I'm running my GDMU for extended periods of time, I'm looking at you, Crazy Taxi. I'm not going to risk burning the machine out, so let's move on to the next step, which unfortunately means first, reassembling the Dreamcast. Now one thing I want to make sure of before all the parts start going back in, is that this kit will actually fit my Dreamcast, because there's a lot of screws and a lot of bits to put back in, only to find out you need to adapt something. So here's the kit we get to mount the knock to a fan to the Dreamcast. And here, out of the box now, is our little knock to a fan. Lovely, quiet little thing. But obviously much larger than what we took out the Dreamcast to start with. So there's going to be a certain amount of um, modifying we're going to need to do to get this to fit, I think. And the first modification you get in the pack is the 3D mounted bracket for the fan itself. Doing away with the old fan mount there. So that can go to one side of all the other bits. We also get a new eject mechanism for the lid, as again, the fan does interfere, it's much bigger, so we'll leave that to one side for now. And a wire adaption to get you off the knock to a standard plug onto a Dreamcast three pin. So that's, that's how you're gonna adapt the wire. You're just gonna plug these guys together and then plug that into the controller board fan port. That's the bracket we're gonna to use to mount the fan. So the fan will sit in the bracket like that, we'll pop a screw through to hold him in and then that'll drop into the machine just like... Ah, ah, I've hit a snag. My Dreamcast uh, variant has hit a bit of a snag here, guys. So 
The bracket fits in the screw holes nicely, but my fan is too fat to fit in a hole. So what do we do now? Hopefully we can do something with this plate on the underside. I don't really want to start butchering this, but uh, how else would you, would you get that off? Let's have a look. See, that's like an aluminium plate. That is the heat sink for the console. So the only way I can get my fan to fit is to trim this. I don't really want to do that. So after looking into it a lot more, and I never did this initially, I have one of those Dreamcasts that straddles the line between VA1 and VA0. Now the main board, the controller port and the GD-ROM drive are all VA1. But for some reason, the heat sink they use for the motherboard and the fan itself is from the VA0 run. Even the power supply was VA1, so it's almost like they had leftover components or something. So, Nod's game has not got much choice here, guys. I'm gonna have to mark this, measure it, and cut it if I want to get this little fan to fit in my Dreamcast. Right, to prevent any filings from cutting this, getting onto this heat pad, which is in direct contact with the the brain of the Dreamcast. I'm going to cover it over just to save getting any filings of aluminium stuck on that. I'm sure coming into contact with the uh, the CPU of the Dreamcast can't be good. There may be better ways of covering this, guys, but what I have is the bag the stuff came in and a roll of sticky tape, so that's how we're going to do it, mate. So we're going to go take this outside and uh, just cut the end off here. Nost Gamer's got to go and put some shoes and socks on first because they're rather comfortable in the house. A bit like John McClane, guys. Love walking around barefoot. Oh, carpet on your feet. Come on. Oh, it's so good. So here's a little piece we cut off. Uh, it's as straight as I could get, which isn't too bad. But uh, aluminium's a lovely soft metal, as you can tell it frays a lot when you're using a hacksaw. So what I did after was just uh, file the rough edges away and uh, and sand it flat. And we've ended up with a lovely edge on this that's quite flat, nice and straight. It's lovely and smooth now. I wanted to get rid of all the rough so there was no sharp edges on that. But now that should drop straight into the Dreamcast and our Noctua fan should go right next to it. But you can see why I covered that over. You can see all the tiny aluminium filings that would have made it all into your heat pad on the back. And the last thing you want is those coming into contact with the CPU of the Dreamcast because I'm sure it's going to make it misbehave or worse. So it's always good to have the precaution of covering these things over. So we can uncover him now, everything's been cleaned away. Nice and box fresh, guys. That's what we want. And uh, none of these nasty little filings like you can see on the other tape. Let's bring our Dreamcast back in because he's ready to receive the cover again. Nice and clean on the underside of the heat spreader. Didn't pick up any of the aluminium filings. So we can just drop this guy straight back over. There we go, look, lovely smooth edge. Then I can bring him into focus. It's not a bad job there with uh, just a file, bit of sandpaper and a hacksaw, guys. So it, these things aren't impossible to do, even with the most basic of tools. This is the Nods Gamer approach to these things. So I used a hacksaw to chop the aluminium off. I then filed it down with the only file I've got, which is a nail file. And I tell you what, it worked because aluminium's nice and soft. And then I just used a bit of glass paper to smooth it over. So let's rebuild the Dreamcast really quick, like that quick. All we need is one screw from the Noctua fan kit, as far as I'm aware, a Noctua fan and our mounting bracket in order to get this to fit. Just to check that it will fit, we'll just put the bracket in place with the fan and it does slide in behind that heat sink lovely now, at the bottom, which is great. So let's get our fan attached to our fan mount. Be careful here not uh, to break this 3D printed mount because the plastic used for these is much softer. So our fan's in place on the mount now, and that should drop straight into the Dreamcast there. No interference from anything. So we'll use the two teeny weeny screws we got with the Dreamcast to fix this back in. But the problem is now the fan now interferes with this screw hole. So what we're going to have to do is attach the fan afterwards. Doesn't make things annoying at all, does it? So we're going to have to drop this guy in first. Um, and I will reuse the two screws that came with the original fan so that we know they'll fit. So there we go, our brackets in place. We're going to have to get the fan on. So we'll have to put the fan in at an angle now. But I want the angle for the power 
probably get the power to come from the bottom, I think we can. No, we'll have to put it in that way around to keep the cable around the back. Pop the screw back in to hold it into place. Oh, I'm being so gentle with this because this plastic bracket does feel like it won't take too much excess force. So we need to get this plug into there now, which is the wrong way around. Luckily, with the kit, you get the uh, the adaption. I think this has got a resistor in line on there. I'm not entirely sure because I haven't stripped it back. I hope it does so we don't get any problems. Now we just need to come up with a lovely way of getting this in to position without disturbing anything else in the Dreamcast. And I think, guys, there's loads of room under that GDMU so we can slide some of this cable up there maybe even feed it up the side and back down again on to dilemma two if this nice thick fan requires you to have childlike dexterity with your fingers to get this in not the game i didn't think it through once again so we're going to plug this in the hard way or maybe even just plug it in the easy way and admit defeat here so it means i'm doing the fun again so now we're all in, the fan's plugged in, we just need to come up with a sensible way of getting these cables out of the way. And what I see most people do, is, uh, and which I will do temporarily till I come up with a better solution, is to just loop it underneath there and then pop it under the GDMU. So for the moment, what I want to do is just nip away, get a power supply quickly, and make sure we've done this all correctly, and then we'll move on to how this hinge that comes with the 3D printer kit is going to go onto the underside of the lid. I'll tell you what, guys, this is so much quieter than what we had. Listen to this. So not only have we got the fan on the correct way around, it's much quieter. So now let's tackle that tricky lid. Now that that's done, we need to get this, this bracket off. Remove the spring and remove this bracket. But before we start, the two-piece bracket they give you with the Kaiko kit, guys, uh, is a nightmare to assemble. This 3D printer piece here needs pushing through the center of this round at an angle and just locking in. It is caught in the appropriate way, so there's a, a rounded edge on this side, so there's only one way to put it in, but it's very difficult to get in, guys, so slow and, uh, you know, firm pressure on there without bending it or breaking it. It was, a, it was a nightmare to get together, but that is our new hinge. So we'll start off by removing the, uh, removing the spring these two screws here we're going to need to reuse the little washers underneath so we'll just whip this guy out here possibly keep the screws too because uh, the Kaiko kit didn't come with any screws just the brackets you needed and like with the fan we just reuse the screws there let's just pop that lid open a second so we can remove that Some of those screw pegs don't look very happy but it was a cheap case we used on this Dreamcast again, so I don't want to keep taking it to pieces because it's going to die at some point. So we'll discard this guy. This bracket goes in vaguely similar to the other one, so just locks in that way. Make sure that when that's sliding as well, it slides closed and it can hold the lid shut. So from there, we'll reuse the two washers that we got when we took the old one out. the other one there because if you don't screw this together I'm pretty sure as soon as you press eject once you've done it it's just gonna fly to pieces so I'll just wrap that guy on there and round to the end of the new piece which doesn't seem very firm at all but let's see if that works and uh, it does but it's very stiff that is very stiff why is that so stiff guys is it because not the game has screwed it up a little bit too tight? Possibly. Loosen that off a few turns. And our lid closes nice and opens. It only opens so far guys, but this lid, remember in the first video, had a problem with the bracket there and I did have to fix it. But because it's going to have an SD card in all the time, we don't really need to open the lid. So now that's all in and done and screwed up, I've even added a little heat sink there for what good it's going to do. I was thinking of cutting this back to get them to fit. If the Dreamcast continues to overheat after this, then we will be looking to that. But for now, let's drop the lid on. Because this should all be complete and it should go to book together nice and snug. Absolutely beautiful. We'll just add some power to the back rather quickly to make sure our Dreamcast still powers on. 
down. It's much quieter. And that fan is purring beautifully. So we'll just zip the screws up and then we'll jump over to the computer and show you where we've got to with the little project I had of backing up on my GD-ROMs. Which, by the way, guys, took absolutely flipping ages and I probably killed a Dreamcast doing it. This is the folder that I've been using to hide away all my Dreamcast GDIs as I've backed them up because it's become a mammoth task here. There's over 250 gigs worth of disk images. And what we want to do is get them, as many of them, onto a 128 gig SD card as I can and the rest onto whatever I can find lying around. So in order to prepare the SD card for this, uh, if you're using anything over 32 gigabytes, because the card needs to be prepared in FAT32, you're going to run into trouble if you're using a newer version of Windows as it only lets you format 32 gigabyte cards. So if you need to do anything larger than that, just point yourself towards your nearest browser and type in SD card formatter and I'm sure you'll find some free software in there that will help you do this so you can get that larger card formatted into FAT32 for this. So what we're going to do now is like a bulk version of last time when we backed up Dream On Volume 1, except this time we're going to be copying over mass amounts of Dreamcast games using GD Menu to our newly formatted SD card. So let's open up GD Menu. Come over here somewhere. That's about nice. And as we can see, I've got a nicely prepared SD card there with GD Menu on, and it's our J drive. So what we're going to do is we're going to shrink these as we put them on to enable us to cram as many games onto this card as humanly possible. I'm just going to copy over half of the games in one go first, and I'm just going to keep adding them and adding them to see just how many we can get onto one card and how far we can push this poor little micro SD card. So first off, before we drag anything over, we want to go over to GD menu and highlight enable shrink so we can shrink those GDI images down on an SD card. Basically what that does is remove all the padding files from the game image that just make it a certain size and uh, it just saves you a hell of a lot of space and you can get more games on that way. I'm not going to check this middle box because I'm not too sure how long it's going to take to shrink compressed games. As I've got a lot to do, I'd rather it not take a massive amount of time. So I'm happy with it skipping a few. And finally on the end, use blacklists is a good idea because that stops uh, any games that are incompatible with being shrunk from being shrunk down in the first place and not running on your card so it will just ignore those when you're doing the bulk copy so what we need to do is get well, I don't know roughly 100 odd of these we'll say half 223 files yeah I'll go for about 112 files then we'll just do a big batch in one go copy them over like that let GD menu card manager build that up into a, a list that your card will understand and as always it doesn't populate it in alphabetical order which is why it's so cool when it's done to use this lovely sort list button at the bottom just so it alphabetizes the card for you otherwise you're gonna get it in the order it's appearing on here which is kind of hodgepodge so according to this we've got 111.47 gigabytes worth of games to put on there and we're just going to click sort list so let's alphabetize that then we're going to click save changes save changes to your drive yes and then it's going to prompt you for which games you want to shrink down and as i said before if you're using the blacklist then it's not going to show you any of the games in this list that won't copy over so this is purely games that you can shrink down and as we can see the vast majority of them can be done so we're going to click select all and click ok now this is going to take a hefty amount of time guys so uh, I'm going to go and do something extremely time consuming. Man these games are tiny. Some of them are barely shrunk in size. Oh we've got there look, res is nearly 400 megabytes. A lot of these games are tiny. 120 more megabytes for Power Stone. Come on. So you know what this means guys don't you? It means we've got to plug this into the Dreamcast and see if this card loads up. I can't wait to see if this loads up. That is phenomenal, man. So shrinking them down, I've managed to get 178 disc images on there, which is probably roughly 160-odd games onto one. 
which I'm rather chuffed with. So let's stick the card in the Dreamcast now, pick a random game and just see if everything runs okay. So here we are sat in front of my Dreamcast and we have games starting from number 2 there at 102 Dalmatians, rocking all the way down to 178 with Super Runabout. Now there isn't 178 games on there, there isn't 177 games on there because a couple of multiple disc ones. I'm more than happy with what we've managed to cram on there. So we will load a game up quickly at random. We'll stop on number 11. We're going to take a dip into Buggy Heat, ladies and gents, just to see if the game works okay. Well, Buggy Heat seems to work okay. We bum round on our Dreamcast. You see, the sound is nice and consistent. There's no. What I was worried about when you compressing these games down is the sound would lose some quality or it would get all jittery or there'd be some problem reading it from the card but so far I mean it's just buggy heat it's an early game in the system's life it, uh, it runs perfectly fine it's full of buggies and it's very hot excellent so now we know that works and the games will run off this SD card and it's absolutely stuffed to the eyeballs too with Dreamcast software we'll get the rest of my games onto a second card and then swiftly move on to a third card because there's some new interesting software I've been itching to get in this Dreamcast ever since I started doing these mods. I want to get onto that and play some of those games too. Right, so that's my entire collection backed up onto two SD cards and it takes up a lot less space than it currently does on my shelf. I'm not going to get rid of my games, I just wanted to be able to play them easier, and that's that part of it done. But what I want to do now is, recently a new library of games has opened up to Dreamcast users, and I've been made aware of this by the uh, powers of the internet. It's the Atomis Wave arcade games that have now been made playable on the machine. So I've got the, uh, the Atomis Wave library to try out as well, so we're going to drop those onto a card much the same way we did with my Dreamcast library, but we're not going to shrink these files down. I'm just going to let them copy across as they are. So, just like last time, we'll just drag them all in, sort the list alphabetically, click Save Changes, click Yes, go make a cup of tea, and I'll see you in a bit. It looks like it was a good time in getting back when I did my drink. Yes, it was. <laughs> okay, so done. So now we've got three cards crammed with Dreamcast goodness. Let's fire the machine up and play some games, guys. So here we are on the GD menu, and this is the second card we put together, which contains the back end of my Dreamcast library, the last two games in S, all the way down to Z. Obviously, I'm missing a few titles along the way, but I don't own them yet. So we'll jump into Zombie Revenge. To me, this always, I always thought of this as like House of the Dead, the beat em up. It's a nice little Sega arcade beat em up. With a nonsensical zombie story. Let's go. Here we go. Don't know the buttons yet, so uh, B is shoot. Does that B? Yep, B is shoot. And uh, Y is punch him in the face. Punch him in the face and shoot him. Yeah, we can. We'll mow you down, guys. Oh no, the zombies can shoot you as well. What's going off? Let's disarm that guy. Can't have you with a machine gun, mate. Okay, zombie revenge. Let's try another. So we'll try a bit of virtual fighter. I'm going to be incredibly rusty at this. I've not played for a long time. Here we go. So all the games I've played so far seem to run well. No problems there. There we go. I suck at Virtua Fighter, but I run around. Crazy taxi! Repeating the crazy boost over and over is the greatest way to play this, but it gives you the worst cramps in your hand. There we go. Now I am so happy that one of my favourite Dreamcast games runs without a hitch. Crazy Taxi really was one of those games that sapped many, many hours away. Let's try one more game and then we'll move on to the uh, Thomas Wave stuff. Fighting Vipers 2. Fighting Vipers 2. So here we are with a bit of Fighting Vipers 2. As you can see, I am Honey, or is it Candy as she's called in the PAL version? I can't remember. Kicking some butt. 
Fighting Vipers 2. So let's move on to some of the Atomist Wave stuff and see how it runs in uh, in our newly modified Dreamcast. Now a lot of them show up, I don't know how many are going to work, but here are the Atomist Wave games. Demolish Fist. That sounds cool. I have never heard of a lot of these games. Dolphin Blue. Extreme Hunting. Fist of the North Star. There's plenty to play through. Guilty Gear. King of the Fighters. Knights of Valor. I, I'm already interested. That cover art's got... Let's do Knights of Valor. That cover art's got me uh, interested. It looks very Dynasty Warriors-ish. Oh, awesome. I like it. The sprite work and stuff reminds me of Guardian Heroes. I know it's not. It's not going to be that kind of game. I suppose this is a little look into the world of what Dreamcast games could have been like had the system run its course a little longer. And this is beautiful. I detect a little hint of slowdown, but wow. It's like a whole new library of games is just opening up. We've got Metal Slug. Awesome. Backgrounds look a little more detailed than the uh, usual affair. Slightly different look to the game. But the mindless violence remains the same. So I'm happy with that. Honestly, this new library of games has breathed so much life into the Dreamcast as well. It's just having all these new games to play. It's like potential releases we could have had had the machine done better in its life cycle. But no, it, more than that, it's just interesting to have some more stuff to play on a, such a classic old machine. Metal Slug, love it. And we have Force 5, another awesome game in the lineup. With all sorts of uh, cool looking characters in here. We like the guy with the fire on his face. He doesn't look happy. I look like a wrestler, so I thought I'd be able to grapple. It's quite a fast beat him up. Good pace to it. Again, another, another game for the Dreamcast. It's really cool. It runs really well. This game tries to be like Tekken and Virtua Fighter at the same time. It's got very fast-paced combat, but you've got the punch, kick, and block controls of Virtua Fighter. It's very bizarre the way it plays. But interesting game nonetheless. And another Atomic Wave game to be happy to add to the Dreamcast library. Let's have a look at Dolphin Blue. Yeah, this is like a 3D version of Metal Slug, almost. What's at max? What what have we got? Ah, oh, there we go. We use that special attack. And there's the dolphin, hence the name Dolphin Blue. The Dolphin Blue is definitely another great game that we've got in, in the uh, Atomic Wave library on here. Beautiful. Here we are getting my ass kicked on Gear to Gear, but what a great selection of games the Atomic Wave arcade boards brought us to the Dreamcast. So far, all the ones I've played work fine. As you can see, I'm getting my ass kicked here on Guilty Gear. Um, there's a little bit of slowdown in one or two of them, but one excellent addition to any Dreamcast library. Now I've got all my games backed up on an SD card too, ready to just stick in the GDMU and play. I'm going to have so much fun with this now. It's made all these games infinitely more accessible for me. Because I don't like having to constantly switch discs when I'm playing and stuff. It's nice to have it all there in one Dreamcast. I'm pretty sure there's much more I can do to this console. And uh, at the moment, I'm just happy at the point we're at with the Dreamcast. So here we are, we've reached a natural stopping point for the Dreamcast project for now. We've got the machine up and running. We've got my entire Dreamcast library backed up onto a uh, army of small memory cards, which I can just pop in at will. And it saves a lot of wear and tear on my discs. So anyone looking to get one of those uh, SD card adapters, the greatest thing about that is it doesn't only just back up your normal Dreamcast games, it also backs up any of your indie games too. I've backed up my Gunlord um, and that works fine. Flashback, Fade to Black, Arcade Racing Legends. I'm pretty sure it will back up anything because we've got it running the Thomas Wave stuff as well and that's just arcade games that have been made to work on the Dreamcast because it was so similar to the arcade hardware. They run virtually flawlessly anyway on the machine with a little bit of slowdown so there's plenty of stuff to play. I'm going to go away and spend loads of time on this Dreamcast now so expect to see plenty of gameplay videos coming up in the near future and we're not going to leave this little purple guy in the dust because we are going to do some more modifications to the dreamcast a little further down the line but for now i'm really happy with this purple little beast i'm going to go away and play some crazy taxi
So if you've enjoyed this content, please leave me a like, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. We're Not Gamers going to mess around with a few more retro consoles. I just need to go back to the Not Cave and select one uh, completely random that needs upgrading. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Hey, hey, stop a little closer. Oh, that was too dangerous. Careful. Oh, no.